we think about where all of our cash flows are coming from in a DCF, they're coming about from now until infinity. In the first forecast period, we come up with our free cash flows. So that's detailed cash flow calculations, either from years one to five or from years one to 10. However, thereafter, we assume the company enters some kind of steady state. It's now a mature company. It's during this period that we calculate the terminal value. And this will represent the value of the remaining years, year six to infinity or year 11 to infinity. Now, because that value represents so many years, it's going to be a very large portion of your eventual value of your DCF. And that means it's also very sensitive to assumptions that you make when coming up with that value. There are two techniques we can use to get to that terminal value, and the first is a growing perpetuity. We assume the company will grow at a nice, steady rate during the steady state period. The growth rate used in that growing perpetuity is one of those assumptions that's very sensitive. It will have a huge impact upon that terminal value. Alternatively, we could use the EV multiple, an enterprise value multiple. This is where you take the company's EBIT or EBITDA in year six or 11, and then you multiply it by another company's EV to EBIT or EBITDA multiple. Again, the multiple that you use, that's another of those assumptions that will have a large impact on the terminal value calculation.